comfortable, satisfying our preferences, our utility, things are getting better and better in that sense. What's lacking here, though, is any kind of inspiration to greatness. Inspiration to actually work hard to achieve things that are genuinely of value. So the picture here is of a utilitarian comfort satisfying our um, desires uh, as, as we happen to feel them, unable to commit to do the hard work that requires suffering in order to achieve things that are genuinely great. Um, so, this contrast between merely good and genuinely great. So great for Nietzsche is not just a lot of good. It's not just really good. It's something that is not comfortable. It's something that requires suffering and striving in order to overcome difficulties to make something really worthwhile. And that is what's lacking. Uh, that's what's lacking because um, because the moral system of values um, doesn't have uh, a positive ideal to strive for. It's simply reacting against um, strength. What kind of great things do you think? You well, it's a good question, and I'll say something about that um, later on. Um, but. But we've already seen one example. Or at least we've seen an example that Nietzsche hopes and imagines is an example. He's not really sure. Right at the beginning. Oh, it is. Of the first essay. of 
the values or the value system that one um, affirms. And here, um, he's describing the metaphysical picture, the metaphysical worldview that's associated with morality, that's associated with the moral system of values. Um, and really, he's criticizing a certain Kantian picture. Really, he's criticizing um, Kant's metaphysics of morality, um, and specifically the, I, the, um, the idea of a will, the idea of a person as a will beyond or behind ordinary experience. For Kant, you never have an experience, an empirical impression of a will. Um, so it's something Nietzsche would say that is projected into a metaphysical world beyond the world of ordinary experience. And Nietzsche would say we can see that kind of projection as a reflection of the values that are being affirmed, um, moral values. And of course, what the moral values are primarily about is resentment and blame for the strong and powerful. And so the thought is that in order to be able to blame the strong and powerful, we need to think of individuals as having a will that is both metaphysically distinct from our empirical existence and radically free. So, uh, in order to blame, that is, to make sense of this fundamental value of resentment, we need a metaphysical picture that allows us to do that. And the way Nietzsche thinks morality does this is by um, having a will um, that's not part of this world, that's not part of the ordinary world of experience. Um, instead, also, let me say, make sure it's clear, for Nietzsche, there is no such world beyond or behind our ordinary experience. So a person's, let's say, character for Nietzsche is simply what it is that they do, simply their actions in the world. There's no further thing that stands behind their uh, their character or actions in the world that's choosing it, as there is um, for Kant, a will that chooses freely its natural. Uh, so um, the moral understanding, the understanding uh, of the will that the moral system has, says that for example, the idea of strength, strength of character, let's say, is something, um, is a property that is behind, is, a, is something that's behind its expression in action. Um, so as if a, um, as if a person's strength <coughs> is distinct from the set of actions that they perform. This is what he's saying. About the middle of 25, it says, so popular morality also separates strength from the expression of strength, as if it were, uh, sorry, as if there were behind the strong an indifferent substratum that is free to express strength or not to, to choose whether to act in this way or not. But there is no such substratum. There is no being behind the doing, effecting, or becoming. The doer, that is like the will, the thing in itself that is explaining the empirical actions. The doer is simply fabricated into the doing. The doing is everything. So our actions in the empirical world are all that there is. Um, so a 
another way of saying this is that this view of morality, he says, doubles the deed. So on this picture, um, uh, at the bottom of 25, um, first there is a decision to do something. Um, so this is what we evaluate in a person's character. Right? So the decision to do something is something like choosing a maxim, choosing a principle of action, giving ourselves uh, a principle on which to act. And then there's the action itself. So on the basis of that maxim. So Nietzsche is suggesting here that, um, that this picture of there being two steps to any action first choosing a principle off in some other world, and then applying that maxim or that principle here in this world is doubling the deed. There's nothing more than just the action. Um, Responsible for their actions, responsible for their character. They could have done differently. 